what's going on, sports cards fans? Ray from Philly here, and welcome to another episode of Sports Card Memories. This here is episode number two, and as you can see, my special guest tonight is Picker Jim. Jim, how's it going tonight, buddy? Doing good, Ray. Doing good. Um, appreciate you having me on. It's an honor. No problem, man. I was looking forward to talking to you uh, for quite a while, actually. We've known each other for a while, but we haven't really gotten to really talk. You know, we met in Atlantic City at the, at the uh, 2022 National. That was a lot of fun. But, you know, with so many people there, it's yeah, it's really yeah. tough to uh, really talk. So, well, right. we got all the time in the world tonight. So, Good. The, we always, what I mentioned in the previous episode is we talk about each collector's past, past present, and future. So, uh, I guess we'll get right into it and just go right into your past. As to like, you know, what was the origin and when did you get start collecting and uh, how did you start collecting? Was there a certain person or certain situation, certain thing that that got you hooked like all of us and mm. we're hooked right now? So, yeah, uh, you want to elaborate on that? Yeah, sure. Um, I um, started collecting, you know, like many of us when, when I was a kid, I probably... Um, around 76, I would say, I started um you know my my dad would come home with like these cards not not even packs like just cards and boxes and stuff right. that he would pick up wherever and i you know i had cards but you know didn't really you know i i played with them more than anything looked at them threw them back in the box and you know didn't really get into it a lot i, I mean i had had the cards i would separate them by teams and stuff like that mm -hmm. until um probably around 78 mm -hmm. when I was in third grade, I, um, my friends in school were coming to school with like stacks of cards and, <laughs> you know, baseball cards, football cards, you name it. They, they were bringing them in and, you know, everybody was trading them and, you know, collecting them and everything like that. So I really started getting into it at that point. And, um, you know, I, uh, you know, start every weekend. We go to the market with your mother, and you know, mm -hmm. you're, you're nagging your mom to grab you a pack or two of cards, and you know, worked out like that. And then you get the the Hostess cupcakes, and you get the cards off there, and the Kellogg's, and mm -hmm. all that stuff. And that, you know, I really started getting into it. And around that time, I started really getting into playing sports as well. So, um, you know, I was big into baseball, especially even right when I was like eight years old and started playing baseball. I got right into it really quick. And, um, you know, one, one led to another and, um, you know, the cards, I, I would collect the cards and see the, the players on TV. And, mm -hmm. um, the other thing too, is, uh, I used to go over my, my grandparents' house, like every Saturday, my, my mom would drop me off at my grandparents. That's, what I, that's me. Yeah. That's and, exactly me. Yeah. And I was, um, a lot of good memories of that. My grandfather was, was big sports fan and my uncles as well. Yeah. And, um, just going over there, watching games. Um, every Saturday morning we watch, um, wrestling the WWF. Um, we, have same, we have the same life, man. <laughs> yeah, right, that's the way it was. Back that's the way it was. Probably. Right. But, um, yeah, yeah so we do that. And then, um, early early 80s 81 my grandfather bought a case of 81 uh 81 Donruss and 81 flair baseball cards so every saturday that when i went over there we were like ripping packs like opening boxes <laughs> of cards and um it was pretty wild and it, it just you know kept going from there and then 82 um my my dad and my grandfather went in together and bought a case of tops and, um, you know, same thing just for like months, just like ripping packs, like every weekend and stuff like that. And right. I, I still have a ton of those cards today. Um, I got rid of like a lot of the, um, common players and stuff, like all the stars, hall of fame and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. I, I hung on to them and I got a lot of them still. Um, and you know, that it just from there it went. And then, you know, right around that time collecting, um, cards really got very popular yeah, quick and, question. When you were collecting in the late 70s, early 80s, what did you keep them in? Shoe boxes or cigar box? Because I kept I, them in cigar boxes. Yeah, I had shoe boxes that I okay. kept them in for the most part. Yeah. They went in um 
they went in shoe boxes. Nobody in my family really smoked, so they didn't have cigar boxes around to put them in. So my grandfather had a stack in his basement. I same thing, man. I used to get dropped off every almost every Friday night, at least at least two weekends a month. I get dropped off on Friday night and spent my weekend with my grandparents and he smoked cigars and he had a 50 to 100 empty boxes and kept the cards in there. This is before binders came out. You know, we had to find yeah. places to, to store yeah, them. So. And I was out, you know, I'd, I, like I said, I would separate my cards, not by year or players or anything like that. We're all separated by teams. Okay. So, uh, you know, I'd have all the Red Sox and I have rubber bands around. I'm holding them together. <laughs> like all the Phillies, Yankees, all the different teams. And they all had rubber bands on each team. And so that way, if I was looking for a certain player and I knew they played for uh, the Phillies, for an example, I'd just grab that pile and I'd, you know, be able to find the player. But, um, right. you know, it was kind of crazy. And then shortly after that, like that, right around that time, the cards um, collecting started kind of to explode a little bit. Right. Um, probably around 81, 82, I guess, um, Valenzuela and uh, Joe Chabonneau was, you know, <laughs> big. And, yeah. you know, people wanted to collect his rookie cards. Everybody thought, you know, they were going to get Joe Chabonneau's rookie card and it was going to be yeah. the next Mantle rookie card or whatever. Yeah. And um, card shows started popping up. And so, you know, I, my dad would take me to card shows on occasion. I mean, I was still kind of young. I didn't. I didn't really have any money of my own. So, you know, we go to a card show and my dad would be like, he, he would remember players like from when he was young that, that he liked. And he'd be like, right. hey, how about this card? And I'm like, well, I'm not going to say no, you know? So I'm <laughs> like, all right, yeah, sure. And he would buy me cards and stuff like that. And plus we would, I would be collecting the cards of the, the current players as well. So now um, when you were going to these shows, what your, what area was this? You're from Boston, right? Well, it was in, I grew up in Rhode Island. Okay. So it was in the Rhode Island area mostly. Okay. Um, we would go into Massachusetts once in a while to go to a show as well. Okay. But um, mostly it was kind of local shows around there where okay. I live. You know? Yeah, so that's cool that you – I didn't even know about shows until probably 86. So, oh, yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, I was getting cards from my grandfather. His brother owned a variety store in South Philadelphia and oh, cool. sold candy and that kind of ice cream and that sort of thing. And, of course, on the shelf where – boxes of uh cards i used to he used to order from my uncle a wax box so but there was no binders really we didn't i didn't know about binders till like 81 82 yeah that's a probably about when they like i said right right around that time is when yeah. um really collecting really became popular and people yeah. started thinking about condition and really trying to take care of cards and stuff like right. that and um that's probably around the time that binders came out but then you know they had those three ring binders that you would like jam so many sleeves in there with cards and like the cards are getting damaged and stuff yeah. anyway, but we didn't know, you know, and the pages after a while, those plastic pages back then would stick. Oh, yeah. um, they, I read an article a few years ago that, you know, all of the, the binders from in the eighties, the, uh, the pages were made of some sort of different kind of oils or something in there that exactly. over time, yeah, they would stick. Yeah. So yeah. thank God they're much different now because when I went back to like my 81 binder and 82, you're like, Psh, yeah. <laughs> you're peeling them all apart. I was yeah, like, every, oh my God. Every once in a while, like I like, I go to like a lot of antique shops and stuff like that, looking for stuff and like, they're I'll, like that. I'll find like old binders from back yeah. then. And it's just exactly <laughs> they're all stuck together and they all kind of shriveled up and everything like that, you know? Your favorite player was Yastrzemski around that time, or did you were you playing? I, he was he was, well, he was like when I really started getting into sports and baseball. Like I said, around 77, 78. Right. He was like still pretty big with the Red Sox, you know. Yep. Even though he was older, um, he was still good, and he was, you know, like my grandfather and my father, and like like they remembered him from his glory days and of course they loved them. And so, yeah. you know, you typically get influenced by uh, your family in some senses, but um, yeah, Yaz and um, Jim Rice, Fred Lynn. Fred Lynn. I loved all those guys, Fisk, all those guys. They were, you know, I, different, different days. I would go, when I'm playing baseball, I would like make believe I was like, mm. yeah, it's one day. And I tried mm. to emulate his bat and stance. The and, high stance. Yeah. With the bat kind of, yeah. And, um, you know, Tion, I, I liked him, and I, you know, I love Tion. Even like when I was play, if I would play wiffle ball with my friends, like I'd 
do that spinning motion. <laughs> I didn't plan. And it's we, amazing. Back then when we were kids, we would have every batter's stance oh, memorized yeah. and pitchers. Like we could do catfish on her, Louis T. I mean, now every, you know, everyone pitcher has pretty much the same, the same yeah. move. But back then everyone was distinct. It was so much different back then. Yep. You could tell who was who in the dark. Yeah, for sure. Absolutely. And, um, you know, you know, and like some pitch like Eckersley had that big leg kick and yep. you know, Jim Palmer. And, and Jim Palmer. They, yeah, he had the leg kick, but his leg kicked real up real high, but then his leg kind of kicked out a yeah. little bit, you know, when he got to the top. Yeah, it was, it was fun. It, you know, thinking back on it, it was a lot of fun, you know, even just, like I said, not even just playing baseball, but just like wiffle right. ball, just like fooling around with your friends, playing catch. Right. Stuff like that, you know. You were at you. You've been. You were at. Fen did you ever go to games at Fenway during that time? I'm sure you I, did. I did. Yeah, I went. Yeah. Um, I went to a few games. We didn't go to. We didn't go to a lot of games, but mm -hmm. um, went a couple times. Um, went. My uncle took me to my very first game, and that was in the late '70s. And they played the Brewers, and they lost. I know. Um, <laughs> Bill Campbell. Bill Campbell. Um, Pitcher. Came on and he blew the save, and the uh, Brewers ended up winning. But um, the details are a little fuzzy um, mm. as far as I go. I, I think it was around seven years old or something. I so. can imagine seeing the Green Monster for the first time, though. That thing must be like, what's it like, man? I've never been to Fenway. I mean, it's is it just monster. like it's just this, oh, yeah. this enormous wall? Yeah, I mean it's different now too. With the they got stands, you know, they got yeah seats up on top of it but back then it was no seats there they just had a big screen up there and right yeah it's um it's something to see i mean it, it's so close to home plate it's 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 really um surprisingly it looks probably closer than it is but right um the thing that i take away from going to fenway even still to this day is like you're in the middle of the city there's like skyscrapers all around you mm. and you kind of walk into this old building right you know, and you walk up, it's like a little runway, and then it's just like this beautiful field in front of you with yeah. this beautiful green grass, and it's it's really cool, you know? It's like yeah, you lose that city feel, like, as soon as you see that grass. Yeah, I can imagine. I mean, it's a landmark, man. It's over 100 years old. I, mean, I, hope, I hope it stays forever. I mean, you, you, that and Wrigley Field and all that, but... They're doing so, a big. Yeah. They're doing a big project. They're, they're re redoing the whole area around Fenway, putting you know, right. restaurants and stuff like that, where they, where during game days, they're just going to close off that whole block. Right. And um, they've already done that a lot. They've been doing that a lot over the past few, you know, probably, well, since the new ownership group took over in late nineties. Right. You know, they, they started doing that, but they got this big project that they're going to start doing again, where mm -hmm. they're going to even expand further around the, the park. So they're not going anywhere. They make they have tours and everything like that. Like you can go to Fenway any time of the year and right. you know, even in the dead of winter, and you can go for a tour of the park and you can go inside. That's cool. Yeah, you can actually go inside the Green Monster and um, you know, see inside there and like that. So that's pretty cool. Yeah. So you kept on collecting three. Did you ever have any pauses? Like everyone, like for me, it was from like 2007 to 15. You know, uh, yeah, I, um, you continued all the way, or did you have a pause in, nope, in there? Nope. I um, I collected. I when when I turned sixteen, I slowed down a little bit, but I still mm -hmm. collected. I bought. I would buy like the top set, tops Flair and Dunruss set, like every mm -hmm. year, um, just to have the complete sets. And um, I would buy packs here and there, but I I kind of didn't go to shows and stuff like that mm -hmm. anymore. And um, you know, you get you get your license and you start. You know, you're in high school, you're interested in girls and stuff like that. So yeah. um, I, I kind of slowed down a bit then. But mm -hmm. then after I got out of high school and I was in my um, early, early 20s or so, 22, mm -hmm. 23, I started picking back up again. And I was yeah. going to card shops and buying cards and buying a lot of packs, ripping a lot of packs. That's when it exploded. In, yep, in, stuff in, like that yeah. until um, right around 2001. Mm -hmm. 2002 um by that point i was married had mm -hmm. a house i had three kids um mm -hmm. didn't have any extra money uh, <laughs> didn't have any extra time and i basically didn't do anything with cards probably from around 02 to 
Hmm. Um, 2018, when I got back in, when I got back into right. the hobby, um, and as a funny story with that too, I, um, I had all these cards from my whole life of collecting, mm -hmm. and, um, you know, I'm, I'm like, what am I going to do? I had all this stuff in storage for like years and years and years. Mm -hmm. and I'm like, what am I going to do with this? I got so much stuff here. I said, you know, I think I'm just going to get rid of everything. I don't have any use for this stuff anymore. I'm just going to, I'm just going to get, I didn't even realize it was still a hobby to be honest with you. Right. Me too. And I said, I'm just going to get rid of this stuff and that's it. And, um, so, you know, I'm thinking, oh, I'm going to sell all this stuff and make like $10,000 or something. <laughs> I, I didn't know. Right. So um, I started looking through it a little bit and I'm like, oh, whatever. And then I went, um, I for some reason, I ended up on YouTube. I don't even know why. But I did a, a search on YouTube for baseball cards. That's how I got <laughs> And I found um, Joe there, Silver Jackify. And um, I started watching his videos and I, it was, it was, um, New Year's Eve weekend, 2018, going into 2019. And um, I, I literally binge watched all the <laughs> videos that weekend. And I was like taking my cards and like looking through my cards from when I was yeah. a kid. And man, it, oh man, it, and you know, Joe, he's so enthusiastic. He's got yeah. like energy. And I'm like, wow, I couldn't even believe like this, this guy's like making videos and people are watching. Of course, them. I know. And, and like, and then I'm looking at my cards and like all these memories are coming back. Like I'm seeing these 81 Dunris cards, like <laughs> I left them with my grandfather and, you know, stuff like that. And so, you know, it was pretty cool. And then, you yeah. know, I was instantly hooked. And I mean, at that point I'm like, well, yeah, I mean, I was, I got right back into it. Right. It's right amazing. Back. That's exactly what happened to me around 15. I just was on YouTube one day and I just typed in baseball cards. And the first person I came across was a, a guy named Elijah who was showing binders. So what he was showing in the videos of the binders is if you were interested in buying or making a trade and I was bored. So I said, all right, you know, let me message. And back then, I don't know if you knew this, you could message people on their YouTube account. There was an inbox. They took yeah, that away. Yeah. They took that away around 18. Yeah. It so was you, we, we could communicate rather than now you got to like make, post a comment, like here's my email or something back yeah. then you could message people. So I would message him and we did trades. And then I said, all right, I'll video, you know, what I picked up for you. And then all of a sudden I'm people were mentioning my name and giving me shout outs. And then one morning I woke up, I had 200 and some subscribers. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> what, what happened? And then I start watching more and more people. And it's amazing how this YouTube thing, has made this so much more fun and uh it, it, it's just brought everybody together because we would be just looking at it ourselves and we wouldn't be doing this you know this is what's making it yeah that's it so I mean, much it, more fun yeah i never had anybody really like my like my friends that i collected with when i was young like by junior high i mean they they were they were all getting out Gone, of it yeah. Yeah. anymore and you know i never really had people that I, w I was friends with and right. people that had any interest in collecting other than, you know, you go, if you got, if you got a card shop or something like that around, you can go, you know, and, and talk, talk to them. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, other than that, I was just collecting on my own. And so it, it was really cool. And, um, yeah. you know, for me, I just really started watching YouTube just because I wanted to learn, you know, I wanted to yeah. learn about, and you start seeing stuff like that you've never seen before, even mm -hmm. though you collected for years. I mean, you, you, f you see people are showing stuff that you never saw before. And right. I, I really just wanted to absorb as much information about the hobby as I could. Right. That's really why I, I really just got into it. I started watching right. Eric, those back pages and yep. Yep. Um, Mike baseball collector was one of the yep. early ones. And, um, and that's, that was really why I started watching. And, uh, you know, eventually I just said, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to stop making videos just for myself because I just want to document Right. You know, what I'm doing here, you know what I mean? Right. And um, never with any expectation that anybody would watch them. <laughs> yeah. And here we are. <laughs> I mean, you know, so it's it's awesome. And it's, you know, like you said, like get to meet meet guys yeah. like you and so many awesome people that, you know, we, we get to talk not only through YouTube, but we can text and, you know, talk on the phone and, you know, see, we go to the shows national yeah. and, stuff like that. And we get to meet up and hang out with these people. And that's, 
to me, that's that's almost that it makes it so much better. better. Yeah, it's almost yeah. as much fun as just collecting the cards. Yeah. It's, it's um, it, yep. it, it it is as much fun, really, to be right. honest with you. I mean, I I always tell people like the national is awesome, but you know the best the best time was just hanging out with everybody and and talking and and, and hanging with people. You know what I mean? Right. So now here we are today. What are you collecting today? Do you collect raw? Do you do sets? Do you collect yeah, rated I, uh, cards? And what are I some of the big guys that you have? I still, um, well, as you know, I, I um, and you're one of the guys that I, I followed um, that kind of got me interested in the set registries, you and Mike and a couple other guys. Right. And, um, so I've got a handful of set registries that I'm, I'm into now. I, I've completed a few. And, and that's fun. I love them. I think they're a lot of fun. I do too. I do too. They're almost addictive, actually. They're very addictive. Especially if you're, <laughs> if you're competitive. Like if you're competitive and you're trying to move, you're trying to move your rank, trying to move your rank up. What if I did this? There's a section called "What If" in the PSA yeah. set registry. Oh yeah. What if I got a grade at three here, and it shows you if you move? Oh yeah, it's like crack. It's really, oh, yeah. it's very addictive. <laughs> yeah, it is. And um. But it's a lot of fun, and I really do enjoy it. And um, so, yeah, I've been um, yeah. I've been doing the post war Hall of Fame rookie set. That's which, a good set, yeah. Yeah, which will probably you know take me forever if I ever even complete it. But uh, it you never know. Never say never. I'm telling yeah. you, things happen. And from and from thanks for you. Keep talking about the 300 greatest baseball cards <laughs> of the 20th century. That's going to be actually, my tombstone. <laughs> I actually dived into that set. I got the book over here. and Cool. Um, I took the dive into that one. I've been starting to work on that a little bit. Um, I did I did the Yaz, um, the the run. Yaz basic run, and now yeah. I'm actually working on his master set. Oh. So Let me um, tell you, I did the Yaz run. I finished it. That was a bear. That was a is. bear. I mean, some of his cards from the 67 67 was not 62 that was a bear i mean he has a lot of cards he does he does but the funny thing is like like his basic set is i think 24 cards but yeah like i was like you did a video not too long ago and you were talking about the mike schmidt set and you yeah. were and you were thinking about doing the master set but oh then my you, God. you said there was like 700 and something items on the checklist and, but Yaz only has, I think, 429 on his master. <laughs> but still, this card's like you've never seen before. This card's yeah, like... Yeah, there's like a lot of food and beverage stuff, I'm sure, and Drake's Cakes or whatever, and Dairy yeah, Queens and ice cream places. Yeah, absolutely. Rare, a lot of rare stuff. Like, again, it's another set that I'll probably never, ever finish. But, you know, it's fun to, tr to get as far as you can. And um, I've been enjoying doing that. I've been getting a lot of oddball stuff for him. Like right. Different thing, like different things that you don't. You know, yeah, I, I, I learned about some Schmidt cards that I, you know, like his rookie card is 73, right. but there's, there's other cards in 73. And I'm like, what other cards could there be? I mean, I knew there was a peachy. Okay. Mm -hmm. But then there's team issued cards that's in the set registry. Oh yeah. A 1973 Phillies team issued card. I'm like, now I'm looking for a 1973 team issued Phillies card that I've, never seen before it's a black and white photo it's kind of big and i'm like yeah. there's so many other cards that yeah that's what the registry also will do for you is it teaches you a lot about cards that you didn't even know about man. yeah there's i've been so having, many of them. having a good time with that and um really looking for these these different cards and like i said some of them are just so rare and expensive yeah even if you're lucky enough to find one you you probably wouldn't wouldn't be able to afford it you know what i mean yeah, like I was going to do the master set, which was 700. Then I said, well, there's a master tops, which is like 170. And um, I'm not even concerned about grade. I just want to just, it's just, just getting the cards for me. Yeah. So I used to be like, oh, if it's in the 80s, I want an eight. Now I don't even care if it's like a six. I'm just looking at affordability for the master's top set of Schmidt and just getting cards that look good, you know, That's and just right. getting the cards, right? That's right, to complete the set. And th that's the nice thing, too, about doing the set registry is that um, you really you get you buy those cards that are in those sets and you're really getting a nice collection put together. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's, you know, they're all the top the top cards that you want to collect are in those registries. Yeah, yeah, yeah. for and, sure. Um, the other one yeah. that I'm doing, too, is the um, top 100 of the 1980s. Oh, I, yeah. I, I uh, know you're doing that one, too. 
Mike Payne um, does that one too. Yeah. Yeah, that was fun. I really worked on that. I was really. That's pretty, a fun set. I was pretty attentive on that one for a while. I got eighty yeah. of the. I got eighty of the one hundred right now. Um, but I like you know it's just it's fun because that that was my era, man. That was, that was like yeah, I was really, exactly. really you know head over heels collecting, and um, I, I have so many memories of those cards and. You know, a lot of them, like during COVID, like some of the prices started spiking up on some of them. But yeah, for the most part, most of those cards are pretty reasonable. You know what I mean? And you can even get them in high grades and you don't, you don't yeah. have to touch the bank. And I think that set registry, because before that set registry for the 80s, you know, you know all junk whack era, you know, it's just 5,000 of them each. But I think that set registry, which, by the way, was created by my partner, Mike, this baseball card life. Yes. When I do the baseball card Hall of Fame, he submitted that and requested it. He got that set created. So, but after that was created, you know, I think I know Victor, my other partner, loves that set. I mean, he's totally into that set, and so am I. So yeah. I think it's bringing more interest back to that decade of the '80s when everyone in the past five years has been making fun of it. Now everyone's looking for '89 Fleer Billy Ripken Eric Carter or the, or the Randy Johnson Marlboro card and. You know, there's some great cards in there, man, like Tony there, Gwynn and Puckett. There really is. Yep. Yep. And um I'll tell you one thing though, there's this um there's some card there's some cards in that set that if it wasn't for that set, they would not there wouldn't be any graded examples around at all, I don't think. I, I, I totally agree. Yeah. I totally I wouldn't even people wouldn't I don't think anybody would have any interest in in some of those cards, uh like uh the like Glenn Hubbard snake card or something like that that's but it's in the card. set yeah, now it's in the set and yep. i'm like I, I never thought in a million years i'd be looking for that card, for that card you know I'm like oh my god yeah. but that's what the registries do, do i mean do you click just psa or do you do sgc as well well i mean for the registry i mean i'm trying just, to just just do yeah PSA. me too yeah me too yeah which kind of you know sometimes i sometimes like i'll come across a card that's sgc and it's you know, yeah, that's, so that's the only thing they got you kind of got you that way. You know what I mean? You can't you gotta stick with, with PSA. Otherwise, you know, if you want to add it to the registry, but that's all right. Yeah, it's good. I mean, I don't, I'm not, that, that's a little bit of a downfall, but I mean, right. other than that, I don't, that's about it. I mean, other than that, I love doing the registries. So and, you're in the post-war rookie, you're in the top 100 of the eighties and uh, yep. the Ostremski's master set. Yeah. So now, for the future, we're moving ahead now to the future. What's your any? What's your future goals? Do you want it to go into more? Maybe just staying with set registries or doing set building or, or yeah, no. what's what set registries would you like to add if, if you want to add more? Yeah, I, I mean, right now, I mean, I can't I can't build sets. I just don't have the my. I don't my have the patience. Span <laughs> is not <laughs> good for building sets. I can't do it. Um, but. I um, definitely would would keep going with the set registries. I'm just gonna, you know, I'm just gonna keep working on the ones that I'm doing. I have mm -hmm. the other one that too is the pre, um, the pre, um, not the, the like the Hall of Fame is the future Hall of Fame is set registry. That's it. Yeah, yeah. That one too. I do that too, and um, I'm just gonna, you know, I the fun, the good thing about having multiple different sets that you're working on is like you. Like I said, my attention span is not great. So, like, if I get bored with one, I can bounce over to another one and work on that one for a little while. And, like, sometimes, like, the, the post-war rookie cards, I just, you know, I pick them up here and there. Like, when I'm at the National, I picked up a couple. And um, if I'm at a show and I see one that's, you know, a good price that I need, I'll just mm -hmm. grab it, even without really, you know, planning on doing it. But I know that, you know, that's that's a card that I need for the set, so I just grab right. it. So, yeah, yeah, I'm just... My yeah. my goal for the future is to just keep working on yeah. those sets, and um, what I've been doing a lot too lately is just like trying to pick up different kind of oddball stuff, like things. When I see things that like you just never see, if I can mm -hmm. get it and add it to the collection, that's that's what I'm doing. Right. Uh, but other than that, I'm sure there's probably other sets as well that I would like to work on. I know. Yeah. Uh, the Michael Jordan, Michael Jordan run. I would like to. Um, I actually started that set registry, but I, I've only got a handful of cards, and I haven't really made any any effort on it. But um, at some point, I might, you know, stop putting more attention to that. Um, right. There's so many. There's so many too. You know. 
Do you dabble in any pre-war uh, at all yet? For, uh, say I've, any... got, I've got some pre-war stuff for sure. Yeah, I, okay. um, just random, you know, random cards that I pick up here and there that I, right. you know, but I've, got, I've definitely got some pre-war. Yeah, I've uh, I just bought the T205 Christy Matthewson at the um, National here. Uh, That's a beautiful card. Yeah, yeah. The gold border. Oh, my God, yeah. Yeah, I picked that up at the National just, just like, knee jerk totally unexpected <laughs> like there it is it's within <laughs> reach the guy wanted the guy was working with me and it just worked <laughs> out you know what i mean it was like it was nowhere near my radar 10 minutes before i bought it <laughs> but that's yeah, awesome yeah so um any other red sox player set registers you might want to do um yes yes Fisk, I would. maybe or i would do um if i would do, do another one the next one would be probably rice okay Yep, and um, Evans, I would like to do him too. Yeah. Do you think he should be an all thing, Dwight Evans? Um, I definitely think he's worth. He's definitely worthy of the conversation. At, at I the do. Point. You know, I he's do. um, he was he was um, he was definitely a very good hitter, and he was a great defensive great player. defensive player with a cannon for an arm. Absolutely. So um, uh, yeah, I think he he. I know on the last ballot, you need twelve votes. He got eight. So he was only four votes shy the last time he was on the Veterans or Errors Committee um, a couple years back. So he was real close. Yeah, he's he's um he did better than Parker and Parker. A lot of people are really and I'm really big on Parker. I think he did better than Parker and Munson and Garvey and Dwight Evans was really close. So yeah, if he picks up a few more votes, I guess he could he could yeah. get, get in for sure. I mean, I wouldn't. I mean, of course, he he played every year of his career except for one with the, with the Red Sox. So I mean, I'm kind of biased. So I mean, obviously, yeah. I would be thrilled if he got in. Um, I think it makes it more fun to do a player run, especially if they play the whole career with the team. I mean, he only played one year. What was it with the Orioles? I think he yeah, played. Yeah, his last year he played on the Orioles. That's one year, and Jim Rice, I think, played his whole career. His whole career with the yeah. Red Sox. So that makes sense to me. Yeah, Maybe like a Ricer or a Nevins, you know, Fisk went to the White Sox, but he did, everyone yeah. still remembers him as a Red Sox. Yeah, he's opinion. he was kind of like half and half. I think he actually played a couple of more years on the White Sox than he did on the Red Sox, but it he was played pretty, forever. Yeah, pretty split. <laughs> but um, yeah, that yeah. was a, that was a shame that they ever let him go. Yeah, let him walk. The the damn uh, the damn general manager didn't uh, renew his contract <laughs> in time, so he became a free agent. Like what a boneheaded move that was. Him and um, him and Freddie Lynn and um, Rick Burleson, all three of them. They, they they let their contract run out. They didn't renew their contract, and they they became free agents, and that was and it. He, and he went to the White Sox, changed his number from twenty seven, seventy, flipped it around to seventy two. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. I think the Red Sox would have can you know put up some more, you know, be, instead of waiting until eighty six, you know they would have. Think, I think they would have went back before 86, you know, if they would have kept, especially Fred Lynn. Fred Lynn was still productive. Oh, yeah. With the Angels. Yeah, yeah he, was, he, he, was. Had a, he had a pretty good career, too, under, yeah. underrated, really. Yes, he did. Yes, yeah. he did. So, that's All right, it. well, um, I think we're good. I'm, I appreciate you coming on. I mean, uh, I thank you again for coming on and sharing your, your hobby, your past, and your present, and, Absolutely. you know, what you're going to do for the future. I had a lot of fun. It was my pleasure, man. I really thanks. Thanks again. I really Absolutely. appreciate you having me on. Definitely. All right. So I'm going to sign off now. I'm going to, everybody, thanks for tuning in to episode number two to Sports Card Memories with my special guest, Picker Jim. Make sure you check out his channel. I'm going to post the link down below. And uh, thanks again, Jim. And see everyone real soon. Thank you. Good night.